Well, uh, good morning. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm uh, Brito Cruz from the Sao Paulo Research Foundation, which is a research funding agency. And because we fund the guys here to organize this kind of school, we have the right to keep you hostage here for one hour listening about what we do at the foundation and about research in the state of Sao Paulo. So that's what I'm going to do for the next 40 minutes with you, just to give you a, a brief overview. Of course, well, you are now in Brazil, which is a country in South America, 206 million people. It's the seventh largest GDP in the world. And, uh, well, you ended up in a region in the southeast of Brazil. That's the state of Sao Paulo. Brazil is a federative republic, has 26 states. And one of those is the state of Sao Paulo, which is in the southeast region of Brazil. It's a, a state which has 42 million people. So in terms of population, the population in the state of Sao Paulo is more or less the same size as the population in Argentina or the population in Spain. Uh, the state of Sao Paulo responds for about 32% of Brazil's GDP. So one third of Brazilian economy happens in this state, which makes the economy of Sao Paulo larger than the economy of Argentina and slightly smaller than the economy of Spain. I'm telling you that just for you to have an idea that there is a lot of things going on in this, in this region of the country. Uh, researchers who work in universities or research institutions here in the state of Sao Paulo respond for about 45% of the science which is done in Brazil. That is counting uh, the percentage of scientific articles published in international journals with authors here in the state of Sao Paulo. And uh, <clears throat> that, that happens even though the state of Sao Paulo has only 22% of the scientists in Brazil. So they are really productive. They, they do lots of stuff. Part of this result comes because the state of Sao Paulo uh, uses every year around 13% of its expenditures to support higher education and research, which is a lot of money in Brazil. And it's a lot of money for a state, because in Brazil, states are supposed to take care of the highways, of the police, of the education for the kids, health for the people, and so on. So when a state uses 13% of its money to support higher education and research, that's a, a lot of effort. Uh, adding all expenditures in research in the state of Sao Paulo, companies plus government, state government and federal government, that would give you 1.7% of the regional GDP, which is more or less what happens in the European Union. They have like 1.8%, I think, of the GDP. In the state of Sao Paulo, there are three uh, state, three state universities which are funded by the state. In Brazil, there are universities which are funded by the state and universities which are funded by the national government. They are called federal universities, and the ones funded by the states in some states, they are called state universities. So there are three state universities which are among the best research universities in Brazil. Just to give you an idea, for example, the University of Campinas, where you are, Every year, they graduate 900 PhDs. It's a large number of PhDs for a university. The University of Sao Paulo, every year, graduates 2,200 PhDs, probably the largest one in the world in terms of graduating PhDs. So those are some of the state universities. Then there are higher education federal organizations. There is a network of state funded uh, technical higher education schools like would be like community colleges in the United States. And again, 45% of the PhDs that graduate in Brazil every year uh, graduate in a university in the state of Sao Paulo. In 2014, this number was 6,100. In 2015, 6,800 PhDs graduated in the state. 
Also, the state has 22 mission-oriented research institutes. Some are funded by the state, some are funded by the national government, like, for example, you're going to visit the National Synchrotron Light Source, which is like 900 meters away from here across the hill towards that direction. So that's, those are the institutions which exist in the state of Sao Paulo. And uh, the funding for research in the state of Sao Paulo is split this way. Companies spend most of the money fund, funding research and development. 59% of the expenditures in research and development in the state in 2012 were carried by companies. Uh, the state government carries 24% and the national government carries around 14%. That's a distribution which is a little bit different from what happens in Brazil as a whole because uh, in Brazil, the federal government contributes more and companies contribute less. There is a lot of discussion in Brazil about what should be done to have companies do more research and development. So you can see in those two figures that the situation in the state of Sao Paulo is reasonably different from what happens in Brazil, which makes the situation in the rest of Brazil outside Sao Paulo display like this. The federal government carries most of the funding, companies carry a little bit, and uh, state government also a little bit of the funding. If you add all the expenditures in research, uh, expenditures in the state of Sao Paulo in terms of the percentage of the GDP, that's your chance of learning some Portuguese, dispendio total in PID means expenditures in research and development. So the state of Sao Paulo spends that, what I mentioned, 1.7% is close to Portugal, Spain, China, Italy, Russia. So it's a reasonable effort in research done by, I repeat, companies mostly and universities, research institutes, uh, funding agencies, and so on. Uh, as I have mentioned to you, the state of Sao Paulo does a lot of effort in supporting research using taxpayer money. You can see in this figure that, which compares some of the Brazilian states, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Paraná, Minas, Bahia, Santa Catarina, and others. The state of Sao Paulo in 2013, according to the National Ministry for Science and Technology, spent 10 times more in research with taxpayer money than the second state, which is Rio de Janeiro. And then the other states were like 25% less. So there's a sizable priority in the state of Sao Paulo in terms of supporting uh, research, development, and higher education. Part of the effort which is done in the state of Sao Paulo is done through the Sao Paulo Research Foundation, FAPESP, which is a public foundation. It would be similar to, for example, the National Science Foundation in the United States. It has a fund and it's supposed to fund, to support research. FAPESP is supposed to uh, support research in all fields of knowledge. So you might take note that FAPESP is a research foundation. It's not a science foundation. So we fund research in all fields of knowledge. For example, we fund research in literature, in the arts, in philosophy, things which are not science. And we also fund research in physics, in biochemistry, in uh, astronomy, astrophysics, anything, engineering, and so on. The foundation is funded by the taxpayer in the state of Sao Paulo through a, a legislation which is kind of singular. I've never seen that anywhere in, else in the world. The constitution of the state has an article that establishes that 1% of all state revenues belong to this foundation. And that means the foundation never has to negotiate a budget with the government. Whatever money the government makes, they are supposed to send to us 1%. And actually, the Constitution states that the state is supposed to transfer the money to the foundation every month, not every year. So every month they have to make a calculation about how much money they think they made and send to us 1%. And then the next month they send 1% and make the corrections for the past if they sent more or if they sent less. 
that makes the foundation very stable in funding and also gives the foundation a, a large, a, a sizable degree of autonomy because the foundation doesn't have to please the government in order to receive its funding. The foundation has to do its job, which is to fund the best research it receives. Uh, the way we uh, select proposals is that all proposals that we receive are peer-reviewed. Many times we ask the scientists to send their proposals written in English so that we can send them out to review anywhere else in the world. We use reviewers in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, and across the world. In 2015, we received 25,000 proposals to review, 25,000. And uh, we have some pride in the fact that the average time for a decision was 64 days between receiving a proposal and sending a letter to the proposer, to the investigator. That's very fast as compared to any funding agency in the world. We had a success rate of 40%. Success rate is how many proposals you approve divided by the number of proposals that you analyze it. So, 40% of the decisions made the investigators happy, 60% made them unhappy. <laughs> it's, it's a reasonable success rate. Uh, in terms of annual budget, in 2015, FAPESP spent around slightly more than $600 million to fund research. That's a, a number that is, is interesting because 2015, as 2016 is going, uh, was a bad year for Brazilian economy. But because the foundation has this stability in funding and because the foundation has a sizable endowment, 2015 was the year in which the expenditures of FAPES were highest in its history. FAPES was created in 1962. We are 50 four years old, and the largest expenditure happened in 2015. Uh, this money uh, is, was spent to support fellowships. Every year, we pay, every, every month, actually, we pay around 9,000 students and postdocs who have fellowships paid by FAPES to work in universities across the state. Uh, undergraduate students, master students, PhD students, postdocs, and other types of fellowships. And students who have fellowships paid by FAPESP are entitled to receive an additional fellowship to spend up to one year abroad working in research in a laboratory that they choose, they and their supervisors. So we, last year we sent 1,200 students to work abroad. Uh, fellowships use about 40% of our money. Academic research, which would be investigator-initiated research, uses about 45% of our money. We fund centers, which are funded for up to 11 years, uh, five-year grants. Young investigators, we have a special type of grant for a young person who has been a postdoc for three to seven years and who is willing to start a career as a scientist in a university here in the state of Sao Paulo. They can apply and request funding not only for a fellowship before they get a permanent position, up to four years, but they can also obtain funding for everything they need to start a research laboratory. So those grants are many times one or two million dollars in funding because a young investigator doesn't have anything. They have a laboratory that they need to fill with stuff to, to do their things. Many of the organizers of this school are now young investigators funded by FAPES, Gustavo, Thiago, Paulo, and several others. You will see their, their labs. Uh, so this is a program through which we already brought 1,200 young investigators to start a career in science in a university here in the state of Sao Paulo. Then we have a program in which we support university industry joint research. It's a program in which uh, FAPES puts one dollar and the company puts another dollar. So we multiply our money by two. Those are some of the companies we work with, but actually the list has more than 200 companies. Uh, 
the research is funded for a period of from two years to uh, now we have those engineering research centers which are funded for 10 years. We have centers with British Gas, with uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Smith Klein, with other companies which are located at universities and long-term funding for them to do bold research in collaboration with scientists from uh, the companies. And we also have a program, the last one there, small business, through which we fund research in small business. So any small business in the state of Sao Paulo can request funding from FAPESP to do research that will lead them to a new product, a new process that will make the company more competitive. Very frequently, uh, students start a small business with an idea they learn it during their thesis and request funding from FAPES to do the research that will develop a product. Some of the companies that we funded, we already funded more than 1,500 small businesses. Last year we funded three every week. Some of them came to us as companies with one or two persons. After being funded twice, they became companies of 300 people with 80 engineers and uh, scientists and so on. Some of them, it doesn't happen every week, but sometimes a company works. <laughs> anyway, that's what we do at FAPESP. Uh, our funding is split uh, field-wise, this way shown here. 28% uh, of our money goes to fund health sciences. 15% to biology, 10% to humanities. If you bring agronomy and veterinary here together with biology and health sciences, you will see that more than half of our money goes into life sciences. And the other half, 49%, goes into uh, other fields. Here is physics, 5%, chemistry, 5%, and so on. Uh, and in part because of the support from FAPES, but also because the support the state lends to the universities, to the research institutes, because of the federal money that funds research. Researchers in the state of Sao Paulo publish more scientific articles than scientists in any other country in Latin America. The red curve shows the number of articles published by scientists in the state of Sao Paulo, so you see it's larger than uh, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela, and Peru. And that science many times finds uh, good visibility in good uh, high-impact scientific journals. This is a collection of cover from good scientific journals which highlighted research funded by FAPESP in the state of Sao Paulo. You will see that there are several fields like molecular biology, cell bi cellular biology, climate change, biodiversity, physical chemistry, optics and photonics, material science, and so on. So it's a thriving uh, environment for doing research. And at FAPES, we classify our funding this way. 52% of our funding goes to what we call research with a view towards application. It means that the scientists who proposed, the, who requested the funding wrote one page or two pages saying that that research might be applied into something. 40% is for the advancement of knowledge. It's research which is motivated by the discovery that will happen, not because that will generate applications. And 8% of our money every year goes into supporting the research infrastructure. For example, <clears throat> we fund research in astronomy. That is done, we are not thinking about applications, we are thinking about discovery. Researchers, for example, at this telescope that FAPES built in Chile, in a very high mountain in Chile, SOAR, it's a collaboration with several other organizations. They discovered, for example, light from a uh, a supernova that exploded 13 billion years ago, which is a long time ago. It's, the universe was not one billion years old. So they can see from that light, uh, learn things about how much hydrogen was there in the, in the universe, how much lithium, how the elements were being formed. So it's very basic research in astrophysics as an example of the type of basic research that we fund. We are now part of the giant Magellan telescope funded by FAPESP. 
we are part of the large Latin American millimeter array, the Cherenkov telescope array, and the Javalambre physics of the accelerating universe. So those, those are some international collaborations that FAPESP uh, is part of to support researchers in the state of Sao Paulo to use those machines and not only to build those uh, observation uh, instruments. Uh, on the other side of the, from going from very basic things, going to applied things, we, are, we work, for example, with companies, as I mentioned, like Embraer. This is a result from a project that we supported at Embraer on computational fluid dynamics that they use it to develop this jet, which is now flying all over the world. Many of you might have flown in this, in this plane, which is a 100-seat uh, jet plane made by Embraer. The nice thing that we like about this, those two pictures is that the one on the left, which is the, the simulation, which is the model, they call that a mock-up uh, in the aeronautics industry. The one in the left was done three years before they had the first plane. It's really a computer thing. They were designing the plane, was well designed, uh, landing on a flooded runway. So what you want is the water shouldn't go into the turbines of the, of the airplane. And that happens when you do the experiment, which is a good thing, because in a plane you cannot tweak the, the wings like one inch down, one inch up. You have to do it right the first time, which they did. Uh, Many times research funded by FAPESP in universities in the state of Sao Paulo gives rise to businesses. This is the case for this university here, University of Campinas. In the last 25 years, they generated more than 350 small businesses using technology generated by and created by students, professors at this university. Here are some of those companies. Some are in optics and photonics, like for example, PadTech, which is here, uh, BR Labs, BR Photonics, uh, ASGA is somewhere there. Anyway, those are companies that last year uh, made three billion reais, which is about twice as much as the budget of the university, and they generated 19,000 jobs. So there's an interesting. Uh, uh, collection of opportunities for students, for graduate students, and also for uh, professors uh, working here uh, in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, I want to mention to you very briefly, give you an overview of research that we support related to optics and photonics, and uh, <clears throat> one of the activities that we support together with the federal government is the National Synchrotron Light Source. They are building a new synchrotron light source. It's going to be like this, but it is like that <laughs> at this moment. Actually, it's not really like that. It's more like that. <laughs> so they are building the thing, and it's funded by the national government of Brazil, by FAPES, by several other organizations. It's going to be a very competitive, when it's ready in five years, it's going to be the most competitive synchrotron light source in the world in terms of brightness and uh, spectral resolution and everything. Uh, so that's one uh, example. Then we have centers that we support, for example, the centers, Center for Optics and Photonics at the University of Sao Paulo in their Sao Carlos campus, uh, led by Professor Vanderlei Banhato, who is going to be lecturing at this uh, school. It's funded through our center program. It's a program in which we fund a center for 11 years. It has reviews and everything, but if they do everything right, they can be funded for 11 years. So they can do research which is bold. They can do complicated things that will not give results in year one, year two, year three, but they should have some results by year four. Otherwise, they might lose their money. But anyway, up to 11 years, they do lots of interesting stuff in uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, plasmon photon conversion. Uh, they have a lot of research in photodynamic therapy. This appeared in optics and photonics news, I think, two or three uh, months ago. So they have a, a large number of researchers doing stuff which goes from very basic and fundamental physics to very applied uh, research 
in terms of health sciences and so on. There's also the Optics and Photonics Research Center, which was funded here at the University of Campinas, led by Professor Hugo Fragnito. It also was funded for 11 years. Now uh, it is funded through a number of young investigators and uh, five-year uh, grants. Uh, they do also lots of interesting stuff. You're going to be seeing some of that during the school. Uh, field enhancement in uh, structured fibers, stimulated Brill-1 scattering from multi-gigahertz guided acoustic phonons in nanostructured photonic crystal fibers, uh, OCDMA encoders, frequency comb expansions, uh, stuff which is many times geared towards optical communications. Here in Campinas, there's a lot of activity in, in relation to optical communications, as you will see. For example, researchers at the Optics and Photonics Research Center, from the, in this case, from the School of Engineering, Electrical Engineering, at the University of Campinas, work in coherent optical technologies for optical communications, uh, mitigation amplitude and phase shift drift noise, 100 picosecond electro-optical switching with semiconductor optical amplifiers, uh, rise time and gain fluctuation in uh, amplifiers. So that's the type of research they do. Uh, this is a, a figure that shows to you some of the cases of technology transfer from the University of Campinas to industry in the field of optical communications. In the middle here is a research center, very important, again, 900 meters away from this room. You can bike there the center CPQD, we call it, CPQD. It's a center for research and development. It used to be funded by the telephone company of Brazil, which was a monopoly at some time, and now it's a private foundation. And, uh, for example, things like optical fibers went through from Unicamp to CPQD to industry. Uh, urban doped amplifiers did the same way and polymer uh, systems, which are now being used by BR Photonics, WDM systems, and several other types of applications. And that is to show to you that if you do research here in the state of Sao Paulo or here in this university, there is a high chance that you will find applications and you will find industry using your results at some point, which is a good thing, not mostly because they use your results, but because that generates jobs for your students. So your students are happy to find perspectives to work there. And when your students are happy finding jobs, it means you get nice students next year, right? Because they want to go to places where they can find good opportunities in the end. Uh, we have also, FAPESP also funds the National Institute for Photonics in Cell Biology, which is again here at the University of Campinas, uh, led by Professor Carlos Lenz Cesar. That's one of the results in a study of kinases using images, using, in this case, foster resonance energy transfer system that they built here to observe the interaction between the, the cells uh, in this kind of process. Uh, we also fund research at the Coherent Light and Atoms Manipulation Laboratory at the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, they had recently this very nice result about uh, improving spectral homodyne detection with a complete quantum measurement of spectral modes of light. Professor Martinelli is going to be lecturing at the school. Professor Paulo Nussenzweig is his colleague at the laboratory. And they, they also had this result on quantum state re reconstruction of spectral field modes. So it's quantum optics uh, used in uh, applications in, in some cases. Uh, and I want also to show to you re some results uh, that FAPESP funds at the Graphene Research Center at the University of Mackenzie. That's an interesting case because it was a University of Mackenzie is a university that didn't have too much research, and they decided to create a strong field of research. They have chosen graphene. Professor Eunésio uh, Souza here, Eunésio Toró Souza, was the leader of this project, and they uh, entered into an agreement with Professor 
uh, Antonio Hélio Castro Neto, who leads one of the most important graphene research laboratories in the world in Singapore. And Professor Antonio Hélio spends now three months every year leading this research group at the University of Mackenzie, funded by FAPES. We funded them to buy everything they needed to build this uh, research laboratory. The university built them a very nice building for the laboratory. And they have results in, for example, this is a recent one on edge phonons in black phosphorus that was published in July, last week. And they have uh, high repetition rate microfluidic lasers, graphene-based waveguide polarizers, graphene oxide gold nanorod composites, and uh, we have also effects on high optical excitation on the ultra-fast electron dynamics in stacked monolayer graphene samples. I like this last one here because it's one of the research results in which the colleagues here allowed me to work in the lab. So they allowed me to go there, Brito, tweak some mirrors, do some things, <laughs> take notes, and then I'm here among the authors of this. So I can do some useful things now and then still remember some things I learned. And anyway, another important research center here in Campinas is the, as I mentioned to you, CPQD, Telecommunications Research Center. This week, now, uh, Wednesday, it's going to appear on Photonics Technology Letters. This is the record for unrepeated transmission of 10 times 14, 400 gigabits per second over 370 kilometers with optical fibers, with optical uh, amplification. They can send 10 channels. Each, each one of those channels transmits 400 uh, gigabits per second. And that uses mostly equipment which was developed here at this university and at the, the Telecommunications Research Center at Telebras, equipment uh, built by BR Photonics and uh, Paditech. So I have been mentioning to you some of the companies, the optics and photonics related companies. This is, those are some of the ones that we, uh, the, the guys work with here in Campinas and in Sao Carlos and uh, in Sao Paulo. The companies, in, in most cases, the companies were created by professors or students from uh, the universities. I want to finish by mentioning to you, to you that FAPESP uh, the Sao Paulo Research Foundation has been working to create opportunities for researchers here in the state of Sao Paulo to collaborate with colleagues elsewhere in the world. And we have a large number of agreements. You, you can see, but you cannot read, because not even I can read the small letters there. But the, what I want to convey here is that Every relevant place in research in the world is connected to the state of Sao Paulo through the Sao Paulo Research Foundation. So researchers here can work together with colleagues anywhere in the world, obtaining funding from FAPESP and funding from funding agencies or universities in their countries. We have agreements with all the seven research councils in the UK, with DFG in Germany, with the National Science Foundation, Department of Energy, National Institutes of Health, uh, Denmark, Portugal, Spain, Finland, China, uh, Argentina, Mexico, anywhere. And the number of collaborations has grown. And those are collaborations which are not really only the type of collaborations where people travel, stay there one week, give a talk, and come back. Those are, fun we offer funding for collaborations which will be for a five-year project, which will be funded like $2 million here, $2 million in the other country, and they will work together to do that stuff. So it's real research uh, collaboration. And before finishing, I want to mention to you that we have a strong effort to bring foreign scientists to be here in the state of Sao Paulo. And those are some of the possibilities. We have, for example, postdoctoral fellowships, which we offer. Last year, we approved 670 of those. Uh, it offers a stipend, travel, some research money for the person for uh, postdoctoral fellowship can last for up to five years. Uh, we have the Young Investigator Awards. Last year, we approved 60 of those. 
As I mentioned before, we already brought more than 1,000 young investigators to start a career here in Sao Paulo. Some of them were really successful. For example, this person came from Germany back in 1999 to work in particle physics here at the University of Sao Paulo in Sao Carlos was a young investigator. Now he's the president of one of the universities here, the Federal University of ABC. So he stayed here in Brazil. He's having an interesting career and everything. Again, Young Investigator Awards, stipend, travel, full research support in a four-year grant. Then we have a program for bringing visiting scientists. If people here in Sao Paulo want to bring a colleague from another country to stay here for any time from two weeks to one year, they can request funding from FAPESP. We brought 275 in 2010, uh, travel stipend, two weeks to uh, 12 months. Success rate in this program is like 85%. So if you fill the form, you bring your colleague. Uh, then we have the Sao Paulo Schools of Advanced Science. You are here at one of those. Each one brings 50 to 100 young doctoral students from abroad to see what's going on here. And we have this program, which is what we call the Sao Paulo Excellence Chair, in which we offer a scientist who has a permanent position abroad, who is an outstanding scientist. Uh, we offer to this person the possibility to be here for 12 weeks per year. The, weeks, the 12 weeks do not need to be consecutive. It can be four times of three weeks leading a research grant funded by FAPES. So we fund this person in full for postdocs, doctoral students, equipment, everything they need to establish a research laboratory here. That's how we did the graphene center that I've shown to you with Antonio Elio. He stays here 12 weeks per year. He comes, talks to the students, discusses. He has postdocs who do the work and colleagues there who are doing. We uh, offer this to any outstanding scientists from outside Brazil who is willing to come here, uh, help us improve science and technology in the state of Sao Paulo. And finally, if you want to follow what goes on in research in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil, we have this newsletter. This newsletter goes in English every week. It goes in Portuguese every day, in English every week, and you will learn things about what's going on, opportunities for funding, conferences, for example, this is Nobel Prize Andre Game giving a speech at the inauguration of the Graphene Center at the University of Mackenzie, and uh, we have the Zika virus, of course. You heard about that? Uh, fortunately, it's cold. The mosquitoes are away. They're somewhere else. Uh, anyway, that's a newsletter that comes every, every week with news and opportunities about uh, research in the state of Sao Paulo. So that's what I wanted to show to you. Thank you for your interest. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to comment on them. Thank you. <laughs> Should we have questions? Any questions? Thank you.